This is Heather with Women Own Wheels, and this is my top five review on the 2020 Volvo XC90 T8 E all-wheel drive. Now this particular model retails for around 82,000. A special thank you goes out to Volvo of Austin for allowing me to test drive this beautiful ride. Now in my top five review, we're gonna be covering styling, safety, technology, storage, and handling. So let's get rolling. Number one is styling, so let's take a closer look. Up here on the front of this vehicle, I do want to point out in 2020, they came out with more of the concave grille in the front. I find that very attractive. It gives it like a little bullnose front end. And then as you come around to the front of the vehicle, we do have the LED headlamps with Thor's hammer, which is their signature for Volvo. Coming around, you can see we've got the bumper sensors integrated all the way across on the car, as well as you've got a camera right here in your Volvo emblem. But a very nice, very sharp front end. Let's move around to the side of the car. I want to show this particular model does have the 21 inch rims. This is a hybrid, so here is your plug in. Easy to access, lights up for you there. This particular model also has the inscription trim. So you're gonna see that in your molding down below, as well as around the door handles, the chrome, and around all moldings on the windows. Especially in this gray, it looks really sharp. Coming around to the back of the car, very simple lines, easy, very clean, good looking back end. I don't say that about everyone. <laughs> Moving into the front, it does have the keyless entry on all doors you're able to lock and unlock which is very nice especially with kids if you're unloading or loading it is nice to be able to access it at any door this is one of my wow items for this xc90 is the interior and it is absolutely stunning and of course i absolutely love the combination in this particular model. So let me show you what we've got here. We've got the blonde Napa leather interior trim as far as your seats go. And then it does have the black as far as carpet. You've got the two-tone in the steering wheel and you've got that in the dash. And just the combination is stunning. You've got the nice perforated seats here. We do have a le leg extender on both driver and passenger side in the front. It is a 10-way adjustable seat. We've got the inscription right here in both driver and passenger headrests. Something else I wanna point out is this beautiful gray wood inlay. And you've got it right here in your console, the dash, as well as the doors. And then even in the dash, just the little detail of the blonde stitching really pulls it all together with the chrome accents. Now, looking back in the back seat, I wanna show you something new for 2020 is bucket seats, yay! It's the first time I've seen it in a Volvo. They said they got a lot of feedback from the US that we definitely wanted bucket seats in our second row. So they went ahead and made that happen, which I'm totally thrilled to see, and so are my boys. My boys need the space. They do not need to be too close to each other, so it has ample room in between, which is extremely helpful. My boys also liked how the seats recline. They were very comfortable. They said they had very ample leg room here. The only thing my 14-year-old asked for was wish they had put an armrest there on the side. That would have been a little helpful for them. Now, another thing you have back here, you've got your third row seats with easy access. I got back there, it's a bit tight with this seat, second row all the way back. My knee is pinched up against it. If you pulled the second row up one thing, I do have better room, but I am 5'8", so for kids, I think it would be just perfectly fine. You also have in the inscription trim, you do get the rear shades on the windows. And then you also have this beautiful panoramic moonroof. And then one other thing I do want to show you on the T8s only, which is what this is, you have a crystal, which is actually from Sweden, crystal gear shift. Number two is safety and something Volvo has been known for since the very beginning. So as far as what they have on this vehicle, they've got collision avoidance by city safety, which detects vehicle, pedestrian, cyclist, and large animals. They've got runoff road protection and runoff road mitigation. 
lane keeping aid and oncoming lane mitigation, rear park assist camera and sensors, which we saw around the back, road sign information, which this does have the head up display. I don't know if we can see it. It's hard to through the camera, but you've got your speed limit in sign as well as your miles per hour that you're traveling. You also have, as far as airbags, you've got driver airbag, passenger airbag, you've got dual stage side airbags, as well as inflatable curtain head side, head side impact bags that are gonna be your curtain airbags that are gonna go all the way to the rear. So they're on the A, B, and C pillar. So right up here, you've got them here, and you do have them in the very back as well. Another thing we've got here is we've got the blind spot information system, which is going to be right here where you get your blind light indicator on your side view mirror, as well as steer assist and cross traffic alert with auto brake and pilot assist driver assistance system with the adaptive cruise control, which you know I'm a huge fan of that you've got there on your steering wheel. All right, number three, let's talk tech. Starting with our steering wheel here, I want to show you on the left-hand side, we have the adaptive cruise we spoke about just earlier under safety. And under here, we also have where you can adjust the distance between you and the car in front of you closer or further away as you're driving. On the right-hand side, we've got the voice activation. You do have, this is where you can click and change menu options on your cluster. And this is where you can up and down choose things as well as works through radio and radio stations volume. Now up here in our cluster, I do want to show you, it's very nice and clean, which I really like. And there are a few options that you can change that, you know, to have a different look in your cluster. Right now I've got the center as being a map, but you can also change what you see in the center as well. Let's go ahead. This one does have a heads up display and I don't know if we can see it that great, but currently it does have the miles per hour and the speed limit sign. When you are using your navigation, it does show you navigation in your heads up display as well, which is wonderful and a great safety feature to keep your eyes on the road. Now coming over here, a few things I love is the auto high beams. So as you're driving along, you can go ahead and click that as you're driving, just roll it up and that will keep them on. And what that ha means is when you're driving along and there's a car coming at you, it lower, you know, it turns off your high beams. Then when the car passes and you have a clear, then it actually, the high beams come back on. So it's something you don't have to keep going back and forth on. Another great feature, which I love is the the windshield wipers, the auto windshield wipers. So when it's raining, you just click this button and then it adjusts depending on the rain. If it starts sprinkling, they slow down, you know, slower. If it's raining harder, they'll speed up. So a great tool there, I really love. Now coming over to one of the spectacular wow items for me is this nine inch touchscreen one of my favorites. So it works almost like an iPad is you can just slide over to see different views. Up here, you're going to have your navigation. This is kind of like your main button, kind of like your home button takes you back. And then you've got your audio phone when it's connected. And then this one actually changes to what you want to see. So I do have it on the stereo part right now but sound system, but you can change it to any one of these options or any one of the apps and you can download. These are the ones that just come on it, but you can also download additional apps to your vehicle. So right here, I do want to show you a few things on this side. You're able to turn on and off different items. So if you don't like certain things like the lane keeping aid, you want that off. It, it kind of annoys you. You can click that button and be able to turn it off. But in here too, I want to show you the camera has a great rear view camera, you can see there, nice and wide and clear, but also this one has the 360 view, so you do have a surround car, and you can click, like say we wanna see the front, you know, before you take off, you're out, you know, pulling out of the driveway and you wanna make sure nobody left their bike or skateboard or anything you might run over. So this is a great view to double check that. And, and in your overall surround, like I said, you can choose based on what you want to see. So that's nice and clear. Now, one other thing to show you is the vehicle has a great sound system that comes standard, but this one does have an additional option on it. And it's got the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. So wonderful. It looks great in the car. I love it in the doors as well, but it does sound amazing. So 
in here, if you hit sound, there's some three options for you. You've got this one, individual stage is where I found myself hanging out the most. I really liked you're able to do the intensity. It's got a lot of bass. It's very clear sounding um, and wonderful to jam out to. Woohoo! Um, studio is where it's kind of a surround in the car. Um, it's optimized kind of for every seat in here, or if you want it just um, optimizing the speakers of being up front in the driver or in the rear, you're able to adjust that. And then concert hall. That's going to give you that overwhelming kind of concert hall feeling. So if you're an audio person, this is fantastic. But just know this Bowers and Wilkins upgrade is about $3,200. So just know that going into it. Now, other things in here I want you to know is this is also center is where you have your AC controls and that stuff. So right here is where you're able to turn on and adjust any AC. You can see also in the rear as well as see then that turns on this that you're able to adjust your temperature. It does have dual as far as climate control. And then this is also where you can click and turn on your heated seat, heated steering wheel and AC seats. So let's turn that off for sound purpose right now and go ahead and scroll down. So main menu button and otherwise everything's a touch screen. As we move down right here, we do have a few buttons, very few, um, but you've got your hazards, you've got your defrosts, you've got your volume control here by manually, and you can pause the sound, and then you've also have your changing channels. And then of course on the far end was opening your glove box. Moving down for tech stuff, we've got the 12 volt right here charging thing, and the only two USB ports in the whole vehicle are right here in your center console. Now, the only disappointment with tech was moving to the back. We do have, this is where they can adjust their own AC, which is nice. It's just a touch screen, easy to do, unlock it and then choose. Or this is where they can do heated seats in this particular model. Now, the only one they've got here is this 12 volt right here for the second and third row. That is the only option. So that's a bit disappointing. My kids were definitely looking for more USB ports or something that they can utilize and it just was lacking. Now in the very back of the vehicle, there is a 12 volt in the very back, um, but that pretty much sums up our technology. Thanks. Number four is storage and let's take a look. From the driver's position, I wanna show with the door, we've got a nice large pocket here to store and to the left of our steering wheel there is a tray actually I guess a pocket you open and you can actually store sunglasses keys any small items out of sight coming around to the right of the steering wheel in front of our gear shift we have you can slide up and there's a small tray in there this would be great for change or I actually liked to hold my garage door opener because I'm not a fan of it being on my visor. So right there is kind of nice and it's hidden. Right below we've got a little area here for storage. You've got cup holders and then you have your center console. Now as far as the center console goes I just want to show you I have a pair of sunglasses in there and just to show you the size. So it's not very wide or long and it's kind of short. So it's not a very big console. It's not gonna hold any purses, ladies, but it's, you've got a nice pocket here. Moving to our glove compartment here, I want you to notice something. There is no way to open it. There's actually a button here and it pops open. In here, you can actually see, I do have my small handbag in there that it does hold nicely and it still has a tray here to keep things. Something I want to show you, which is really interesting, is right here, we've got a little cooler thing. You can actually turn it on and it allows AC to blow into the glove compartment. I'm still not quite sure what I would use that for. I mean, it's not refrigeration, so you can't really store any drinks in it. But I guess if you did have something that you just want to keep um, under, I guess, some cool air, then this would be a good spot for it. And you can actually turn that on or off right here. Let's take a look at our back seat. Opening up the rear door right here, in here we've got some storage. You've got a small area here for a drink and a little something else. You do have storage behind the front seats. You've got the little netting there. 
Something I want to show you since I'm here is we do have the bucket seats, but we do not, they are not electric. It is still manual and they're pretty difficult to move. And I just want to show you because if you have kids or if you've got something that you're loading in and out of, it kind of becomes a pain. Now, I don't really move my seats all that much as far as the second row, so I, I wouldn't find this so much of an issue. But if you are in that category, I just want to show you, you've got a lever here to actually fold the seat down right here is on here is where you actually pull this manually but you do have to pretty much give it some effort to be able to slide it forward enough for someone to get into that third row so I don't know if kids would be able to do that themselves although they would be able to get around ugh, as you can tell a little bit difficult get around and climb through that hole there if they were small enough but if they were bigger kids you may have to slide that back which is a little harder now getting in the back seat you do have cup holders right here accessible to your bucket seats. And then there is ample leg room. I mean, I'm 5'8 with some heels on too, makes me a little taller, but, um, and you've got plenty of room. Both my boys were very comfortable in the second row here. Going to the third row here, you have a little compartment right there between the seats for storage. Over on each side, you do have a cup holder as well as an armrest that also has a little storage in it as well. Now, let's go ahead, take a look at the very back. All right, this is actually your space or storage with the third row seat up. And really, it's about an arm length is what you're looking at as far as depth wise goes. You do have a little tray here and you've got something to hold that in snugly, a 12 volt. You do have these on both sides, which is nice to be able to hold bags to keep them securely from flying around. And then right up under here, you're able to lift up and there is a little bit of storage underneath here. You can tell right here, I do have the charging cord to be able to charge the vehicle. Now, something I want to point out from the back here, you can lay down the third row seats, but they are not electric. It's actually manual. So all you do is go ahead and pop this and then that falls down. Now you get ample amount of storage this way, which is wonderful, but something to keep in mind. It's not electric. There was only a latch. There is no easy way to pull that back up. The only way to lift this third row back up is you have to walk around, move that seat forward, get there, and try to push it back up. So it is kind of difficult. So I really wish Volvo would add that in here, especially for this nice of a vehicle. It seems like the electric would be a total way to go to be able to lift that back up really help us moms here in the world or dads being able to load stuff. Last but not least is handling. Let's start with first. It is a 2.0 liter super and turbocharged direct inject engine with an 87 horsepower electric engine, which gives it a combined total horsepower of 400 horsepower for this vehicle. Now, this was my first time to drive a turbo hybrid. So I was really interested to know how it was going to handle. So that's what's important to me. And am I going to feel that when it changes from the electric to the gas? Or what's that going to really look like? But I will tell you, I was really impressed. So as you're driving and say if I do have it in hybrid and you're driving and you're using the electric, but then once you need to, I think, you know, press the pedal to actually get on the highway or to pass someone, it will change over to the gas engine to pull more, of course. Um, and with that, I was expecting, okay, I'm going to feel oh, this changing over to gas, but no, the transition is so smooth, um, very refined. Um, that actually most of the time I could look down to see, am I driving in gas or am I driving on electric? Cause I couldn't really tell. That's how smooth and efficient it felt when driving it. So handling phenomenal being for a hybrid, I wasn't expecting that. So it was a definitely a plus. Now, the other thing to look at is the hybrid only lasts you the charge. Like even if you fully charge it, it's only going to last you about an average of 17 miles that's going to be really tough. Um, you know, you're going to obviously be using gas more often myself because I'm driving around a lot in my sales position. Um, so that's that 17 miles whoop, electric charge went really quickly. Now, when I drove an electric man, the gas mileage, I love to watch that, you know, on my main screen, I changed it to driver performance and seeing those huge numbers on miles per gallon made me feel really good. But then once I ran out, I was just on gas and I watched them slowly go down. 
Um, so if you, depending on lifestyle, if you are somewhere where you have a very you know short commute to work or you're able to charge it at work and at home, then I could see it really saving you a ton of money because you're not hardly using any gas at all. And that would be very efficient. But myself, man, during my day, I drive a lot more than 17 miles. And with that, I just eat it up too quickly and directly go to gas and start bringing that gas miles per gallon down a lot. So I don't know that it would be the best fit for me. Um, but definitely if you, if this works for your lifestyle, it will help. Another thing that also was brought to my attention was, you know, obviously I'm in Texas and it's warm right now. So as I'm driving around and I've got the AC on the entire time, if I'm on electric too, that is also sucking the charge off that. So different climate you're into might affect that as well and you might get more out of it. So let me show you a few details though I wanted to see in the gauge. We've got, here's where you've got your gas, you can see gauge and then you've got the electric charge gauge. You've got ready and then right above it is actually a, like an empty teardrop, you know, meaning it's not colored in. That lets me know that I am sitting here in this car, it is on and it is on electric. So I can, har I don't even hear anything, honestly. Um, sitting here but I can change it over to gas and then the teardrop a raindrop actually fills in now it's solid so I'm in gas now I'm working off gas and not electric so that'll kind of let you know that's where I had to look down and see what am I really driving in at the moment so that is how it charges or I mean changes as you're driving now a few things I do want to show you over here is on our touch screen right here is where you can access right to the left here there's actually a charge where i can have the engine charge the hybrid battery so as i'm driving if i want to charge it so i drove quite a bit yesterday and as i'm driving i'd run out of my electric but then i switch this on so as i drove for a while i'm able to charge back up that electric battery and then utilize it again so this is where you can change and go there and do that um, another thing just to notate, we're gonna run down here. We've got the gear shift and it works a little different. All these, all these new cars nowadays have different ways of shifting. It's not just the regular shifter, you know, this way what you do is you actually hit it twice, push it forward to reverse, or you can actually come back two notches to drive and then in the middle is neutral. And then to park, you actually just press the park button right here. So that is a different way of doing things. Uh, you get used to it and go through it really quickly. Um, right here, you've got your obviously your start stop button and then it does have several drive modes. So just to show you, as I click it up here, we've got constant all wheel drive, pure eco drive. What I drove in it the whole time was hybrid, the everyday use. You do have power. The sporty driving, which I'm sure is just on gas, and then off-road. So hybrid was the everyday use that allowed you to use, the, like I said, the electric and gas. So that is what I drove in most of the time. So hybrid has to fit your lifestyle and how you drive, you know, what area you live in. Those things are going to affect how much you're really going to get out of it to justify whether that price is worth it or not. Um, but don't think that's the only way there is a regular t5 t6 of the xc90 that is still going to be luxurious safety all these things except with your gas engine so keep that in mind that if you just love the car but maybe the hybrid's not for you look at the regular xc90 the t5 t6 i would go for the t6 because it gives you a little more um since it is a bigger heavier vehicle but um thanks for watching please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Women Own Wheels. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well at Women Own Wheels. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.